We are currently living through an explosion of discovery. Now is the golden age of dinosaur research. According to an article on National Geographic, we discover nearly 50 new species of dinosaur every year. That's a new dinosaur species almost every week. With so many different dinosaur species, and new ones being discovered all the time, it can be difficult to choose a favourite. It seems to me, however, that carnivores have a tendency to take the spotlight. Certainly there are many wonderful, interesting and magnificent herbivores, but I, like many people, tend to fall on the carnivore-obsessed side. Perhaps it's the sense of danger. The idea of one of these creatures roaming around today seems to spark a certain sense of fear and excitement. These sort of big bads. Of course, not all carnivores were massive, but some were. And very often it's the big ones that get talked about. In any case, these sharp-toothed, meat-eating titans that dominated the landscape millions of years ago seem to have a certain grasp on our imagination. But who gets to stand at the top of the big bad pile? Who's the ultimate contender for the best of the best? The king. Now we all have our favourites, and for good reasons. And I too am a fan of multiple different species. Carnotaurus with its big bull horns, the crocodilian looking Spinosaurus. There's a long list and a variety to choose from, but for me, it has got to be T-Rex. And yes, this might seem like the obvious answer. T-Rex shows up in a lot, if not most, dinosaur media, and it's probably one of the more famous dinosaurs that gets talked about a lot. So I can understand why some people might think it's too obvious or too basic. But if you'll just give me a few minutes, I would like to present my case why I think the T-Rex deserves the title of King. This is sort of a big one. We always like to talk about how big something could be. Now T-Rex could get pretty large. Some of the biggest ones, like Scotty, were 43 feet long. That's one and a half times the length of a London bus. And weighing between eight and nine tons, which by the way, the biggest land carnivore today is the polar bear, T-Rex was 15 times heavier than a polar bear. T-Rex was a huge colossus that would be truly terrifying to face. However, to be fair, it's not the biggest. Giganotosaurus, kind of, and Spinosaurus, and a few others were bigger. But a lot of these bigger ones weren't that much bigger, and it mostly comes down to length rather than overall mass. Now, yeah, I'm using the biggest T-Rex out of dozens of specimens, and we only have a few Giganotosaurus specimens, but it still only really comes down to maybe a few feet in length. And if you compare T-Rex by its skeleton, it was very thick and robust. Much thicker, in fact, than the other big carnivores. It was built like a tank. Anyway, the point I'm making is while maybe it's not technically the biggest, it was still really big. Bigger than any land carnivore we could bump into today. Also, there are some other unique features that give T-Rex an edge over its slightly bigger brethren. T-Rex had a pretty big and hefty skull, and this is even when compared to the skull of other large carnivores. In fact, the skull of the T-Rex is unique in that it had fused nasal bones. Tyrannosaurs are the only ones with skulls like these. This made their strong skulls even stronger. Due to the massive size of this animal's skull and jaws, it could create a lot of bite force. Like, a lot a lot. In fact, there is no terrestrial animal before or after that had the same bite force as T-Rex. 
not Giganotosaurus, not Carcharodontosaurus, and not even Spinosaurus, T-Rex takes the gold medal with its powerful jaws that could generate 12,800 pounds of pressure. That's enough to destroy a car. And it delivered this mighty bite with a row of 60 teeth, some of which grew to 8 inches long. The teeth also were much thicker than most other big carnivores. And within that big skull was an equally big brain. Big for a dinosaur in any case. In fact, some articles online compare the T-Rex brain to that of a chimp. Can you imagine a creature that large and deadly wandering around with the intelligence of our closest relative in the animal kingdom? Now that does seem like a bit of a stretch. And to be absolutely fair, brain size does not always exactly correspond to level of intelligence. But I think it's safe to say that the T-Rex was still pretty smart. The experts seem to rank it just below dromaeosaurs in terms of intelligence. Now this mighty brain helped the T-Rex with its keen senses, such as vision. That's right, contrary to what Jurassic Park tells us, the T-Rex probably had not just good, but great vision. T-Rex's eyesight was a lot better than humans, and even more powerful than hawks. With large eyes the size of softballs, the T-Rex had the largest eyes of any terrestrial animal ever. It's not just eyesight though. T-Rex also had excellent sense of smell. Remember that big brain we talked about? Well, a big part of that big brain was dedicated to smell. This area of the brain dedicated to smell, called the olfactory bulb, was bigger in T-Rex than it was in other big carnivores, like the South American Giganotosaurus, or the North African Carcharodontosaurus. The T-Rex probably had a sense of smell equivalent to a modern day vulture, and could smell food from a few kilometers away. It could use its strong sense of smell and powerful vision to track its food. Speaking of food, there seems to be some confusion about how the T-Rex ate. The whole scavenger versus predator thing. I hope to be able to discuss this topic further in the future, but basically it was both. We have very clear evidence that the T-Rex scavenged and that it hunted, so it would go after prey. And this sort of leads into the movement and movement speed. Or to put it simply, how fast could this thing run? Now, it's difficult to determine exactly how fast T-Rex could run. Some higher estimates have said things like 70 kilometers an hour, but it seems more recent studies tend to put the T-Rex on the slower end of the spectrum, with a top speed closer to something like 20 kilometers an hour. You will often see articles online about how you could outrun a T-Rex. Well, firstly, yes. If you are a fast runner who's good at sprinting, then in a sprint, you might be able to beat a T-Rex. In a sprint. But let's also consider distance. The paleontologist David Hone gave a talk on tyrannosaurs that can be viewed on YouTube. At one part of his talk, he spoke about something called the Arctometatarsalian condition. Basically, in the foot of the T-Rex, the middle metatarsal is crushed in between the outer two. The reason this is significant is that the tight compression reduces the amount of potential energy loss from jiggling about. This compression leads to more efficient movement. David Hone gives a much better explanation than I and I'll link his video in the description, as it's definitely worth a watch. But to put it bluntly, T-Rex was a distance runner. Maybe you could, if you were fast, beat it in a sprint, but not for much longer. Or to quote David Hone, you could not outrun this animal. No chance.
I've sort of compared the T-Rex to some other large carnivores, but I haven't really addressed the biggest elephant in the room yet. So let's take a look at Spinosaurus. It seems these two are constantly competing to be at the top of the list. This tends to be a pretty heated topic online. T-Rex versus Spinosaurus, who would win in a fight? And to be honest, a lot of people are really sick of this debate. These two titans were separated not only by vast distances, but also millions of years. Spinosaurus being from the mid-Cretaceous, and T-Rex being from the late Cretaceous. That's a 10 million year difference. This debate was probably sparked, at least in part, from the fight that happened in the third Jurassic Park film. The two giants tussled on Isla Sorna before the Spinosaurus defeated the T-Rex. In reality though, this doesn't really seem to be all that probable. If we suspend our disbelief for a moment and forget the thousands of miles and millions of years that separated these animals, who would actually win if somehow these carnivores met? Well, surprise surprise, I think it goes to T-Rex. Spinosaurus is definitely bigger in terms of length, but again, the Rex had a much stockier build. Thicker bones and likely bigger muscles to suit, the T-Rex had a much bulkier, beefier build. Spinosaurus just wasn't built in the same robust way, and had a lighter skeleton and thinner, weaker skull and jaws that couldn't even get close to the power of the Tyrannosaur. There are other factors to consider too, I suppose. With more and more studies suggesting the Spinosaurus was aquatic or semi-aquatic, if this rumble happened in a more watery environment, perhaps the Spinosaurus would have the edge. For my money though, for a land match with these two, I'd put my money on the Rex. Don't just listen to me though. Paleontologists like Jack Horner, George Blassing, and David Hone tend to agree. Even when facing the largest carnivorous dinosaur ever discovered, the T-Rex would be the victor. And there you have it. These are the main reasons why I like T-Rex. Maybe not exactly the biggest, but it may have been the baddest. With a keen sense of smell, excellent vision, a big brain, and a massive muscular body with huge, powerful jaws, the Tyrannosaurus Rex deserves the title of king. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Feel free to let me know in the comments if you disagree with any of these points, or if I left something out. Also, if you are someone who thinks Spinosaurus would defeat a T-Rex, please let me know why. I'm really curious to hear what you think. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.